Truthfully, it has been a pleasure to share these central moments looking into the first five miracles of Jesus. And today, we're going to look at miracle number five, one where there are not many specifics about the details, but it's awesome nonetheless. I, I call this the story of the sunset healing service. You find it in Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, right on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. That day in Capernaum, when Jesus had set free a demonic earlier in the day and then healed a gravely ill woman, when evening came, the miracle worker chose to shower the city with a blaze of his glory. Let's read about it in verse number 16. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed possessed, were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Now, what's our application? What's unique about this story? Well, another of the impacting moments of our trip to Israel in May was joining with Pastor Jim on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee for a healing service right there in the city of Capernaum. As we prayed for people one by one, uh, both of our pant legs became damp from the rolling waves of the Sea of Galilee splattering uh, over us. That made it pretty real, I will assure you. We are told of two earlier specific miracles that Jesus performed that day, the demoniac in the synagogue and then Peter's mother-in-law who was healed. But the key word in that sunset healing service Matthew tells us about is the word all not part of the people, not some of the people, not a few of the people, but all of the people. All the demon-possessed were set free, all of the sick were healed. Those are the facts, the details. That's all we know about that evening of miracles. So here is how I'd like to conclude this week talking about Jesus the miracle worker. I want to take you back to Luke chapter 2 the city of Bethlehem, and the most exciting, miraculous night ever. Let's read about it in Luke 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior is born, has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And you know the rest of the story. Suddenly the sky was filled with a great host of angels and they began to cry and to sing, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Did you catch the words back in verse 9? The glory, the splendor, the majesty of the Lord announced to shepherds the birth of Jesus. John chapter 2 verse 11 told us just five days ago what Jesus did, that first miracle here in Cana of Galilee. It was the first of the signs through which he revealed his, what? His glory. Each miracle, a token of his eternal majesty, his perfection, his excellence, and his splendor. Uh, so on the day of his birth, the heavens were lit with the external majesty and splendor of the glory of God. And here through each one of these miracles, we're given a token glimpse of the internal person, the internal reality of Jesus' majesty, his character, his perfection, and his 
splendor. I'm sure as we come to the end of this week, you'll join me in prayer. Oh God, reveal your glory again and again and again. May we know your miraculous presence, your miraculous love, the miraculous joy of living and serving you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.